So in chapter 18, we're going to talk about the West and the world, empire, trade, and war. And um, this is really where the Western world uh, becomes more or less... Um, this is where the term the West becomes more uh, of a problem to define. And the way that I um, addressed things in the first lecture of this class, because now you take, uh, for example, um, we're going to see the creation of Australia, uh, down, the great down under, you know, the land down under, um, that is going, is that West? There's nothing, it's not West. It, it, but it's going to be uh, English speaking and take on Western institutions. But then, um, as I mentioned before, later on, the Karl Marx, the German philosopher, is going to be an influence on communism, Russia and China and Vietnam, and um, even in a very distorted way, Cambodia and, um, and Laos. And, um, so are those Western? Is that what, what, what is now counting as Western? And, and uh, you know there was that saying the sun never sets on the British Empire so well then is it is it Western well not its colonies so this is where the term the West is more of a concept than an actual than actually meaning something geographically is what that's the point I want to make okay so now this is where the West becomes a concept more than geography okay um, um, and this, from this point forward, I would say. Um, it also reveals another thing which I think is important. Um, so another thing that's very important here is this legacy. And everybody knows about this, the, the legacy of slavery, but there's some other ways I want you to also look at this in terms to slavery and colonialism. Sometimes people in the West have a hard time understanding why people over there, wherever that is, could be the Middle East or Africa, um, some other place in Asia, uh, uh, and they have these negative views about Western society, and that is associated with being backwards, after all. And what I want to point out is that, you know, we need to remember that the legacy of the West um, means different things to different people. Actually, it goes without saying about all legacies. But so, for example, my ethnic background is essentially um, Celtic Germanic, if you want to make it overly simplified. OK, uh, when I say Germanic, meaning even the Nordic uh, countries, uh, Sweden and Germany and then the British Isles and um, and then Celtic. Okay. Um, now, everything that I've studied so far, and many white Americans, this is the same, we are learning about our own people and our own culture, really. This is actually not just a study of, of history, but this is, this is our people, if you want to put it in that way, okay? And so we're seeing this development, and we're seeing the rise of the Western world, <clears throat> And uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, supremacy, the political and economic supremacy of our people, meaning of the European ancestry. Okay. Now, my daughter, she is, uh, uh, her mother is half Haitian from Haiti. Her mom's from Haiti, and uh, dad, the dad, uh, uh, Lolo, is from the Philippines. <clears throat> There's a different legacy there, okay? Um, in which there was th th this Western culture looks at this other part of the world in a very different way. Um, without getting too personal, but I think it's important and relevant for this topic. Um, my ex had to sometimes sleep with an, her nose. Uh, 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 a clothespin to flatten her nose. That was what her mom thought she should do. Where did this idea come from? The French in Haiti made a very negative view of blackness. And in Dominican Republic, where there is um, 
predominantly African ancestry that speaks Spanish with the uh, legacy of Spain, there's a saying, Mejoras de la Raza, improving the blood, and you marry or make babies with somebody lighter. You lighten the, 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 uh, um, the next generation, and that henceforth improves them. Where did they get this idea from? So there is this kind of <clears throat> um, negative view about uh, uh, being non-European. And this Western legacy is uh, here. I, I mean, you know, the idea of, of black ancestry being in, in America, we have a tremendous amount of African ancestry within the whole entire Western hemisphere. But everybody from that background knows how their family got here and what context. Okay, and I think that it's 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 sometimes hard for those of us in the Western uh, uh, world that come from the white side, from the uh, uh, the West, the actual Western uh, ancestry, to really conceptualize the way that th this legacy is going to be way on uh, people's minds and hearts differently that aren't coming from that, okay? Um, so if you're Native American and, um, uh, uh, you know, a black American, obviously this legacy is uh, different. You know, Marcus Garvey, the guy I showed you the picture of in the beginning here with the uh, Napoleonic hat, who came off quite comical, like as I was mentioning, even to, to uh, African American activist, he was one of the first to say black is beautiful, to, to actually assert that fact. Okay, that was a big deal, you know, to say that. Okay, so there's a lot of negative things that come with the Western legacy to other parts, the people of other parts of the world, and other pe people who are from parts of the world who are actually now fully integrated into this umbrella concept called the West. So in this concept there, we have by default a hierarchy of history and of legacy that makes it mean different things to different people. And I, I, I want to stress that when I'm, when I'm doing this because I think this is a very important thing to see why even today that um, the world hasn't really got over this complex issue. And, um, you know, you'll see that more and more in modern politics where this gets manifested, okay? Um, and so, uh, um, having said that, I'm also not here to, to just kind of be self-deprecating and say, oh, it's, it's all bad. And in fact, many, Nash, many uh, uh, people from other parts of the world are, uh, again, are going to see value in Western civilization, despite even sometimes when it comes off negative uh, um, to them. And so, um, anyhow... That's something that I think is uh, good to uh, take perspective of. So I'm going to move into talking about the rise of the British Empire. And talking about the rise of the British Empire, uh, kind of slipping in, uh, sliding from that topic I just mentioned to this, I think this is very important to also point out. The British, uh, the, there's not a, a British Empire until 1707. The... It, uh, uh, before you have uh, the, 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 the British Isles were Celtic. Their indigenous people, their native peoples, were white Celts. People of original Irish, Welsh, and Scottish descent. And the word Welsh means uh, an Anglo-Saxon word for foreigner, uh, uh, even the connotation of a slave. That was, There was Germanic invasions, the Anglo-Saxons and the Utes, uh, or the Jutes, um, unto the, the British Isles, and England comes out of Engleland, okay, all, all right, the Angles, uh, okay, and so English is a Germanic tongue, well, well, to this day, uh, Irish is a language, it's actually called Irish, it's not Germanic, it's not related to uh, English, and there is uh, uh, Gaelic, the Scottish uh, uh, Highlands language, um, and there is Welsh, there's uh, Manx uh, uh, from the Isle of Man. These are Celtic linguistic languages. They were conquered. They were treated like the natives here. 
And so one of the things that, that's talked about uh, um, here is this idea of conquesting and killing. So again, let's put it in perspective. Europeans are fighting and killing each other, and they're staying and they're fighting mainly in uh, each other. And then they're expanding it until they're going to explode onto the rest of the world. And initially what I'm saying is you're seeing white on white crime and violence that uh, uh, um, indigenous people, that racism and the idea of, of uh, a one group being su 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 uh, superior to another is not inherently a white or a black thing. Okay, And in fact, European racism originally, I mean, if you even look at Hitler and the Jews, the Jews uh, looked a lot like Germans, um, right? Uh, uh, and, and slavery uh, was done to uh, um, white Europeans. Um, Sweden had a slavery society of fellow Swedes, uh, even a caste system actually in, in the, in the um, uh, Scandinavia. And so um, the British Empire really starts by first conquering Ireland. And that's something that many Irish uh, still haven't forgot. Okay, so um, and, and, and actually the, the U.S. is going to practice some colonial uh, uh, maneuver. I mean, sorry. Britain, before they create colonies in, um, you know, the Americas or, or what is going to be now the east coast of the United States, they practice first by conquering, uh, uh, again, um, Irish people. So um, that then spreads into another type of racism and another legacy, which is the, what I talked about before. You might feel like I talked about this a little bit too much. What I'm hoping, though, is that I'm kind of bringing in a little different perspective on that. Um, and again, why I'm bringing it up so much is because, um, and, and I won't be doing this all the time as we do all these discussions, but when it comes to the global uh, legacy here, this is important because what we're going to see is that Europe does great by screwing over the rest of the world. And it's not that the other world wouldn't do it to us, okay? I'm not saying that one group of people is inherently worse or better, but the fact remains that uh, this time period, European nations are going to create a tremendous amount of wealth at the expense of, of other people, of the non-European world. And to this day, the economic and wealth disparity that we see happening right now is directly linked to this time period. That's important to also understand. All right, so I'll come back to this uh, next lecture.